All right. Hey there, this is Bram Kanstein and you're listening to Bitcoin for Millennials. In this episode, I'm joined by Ami Edberg. She is a Swedish TikTok influencer and Bitcoin educator dedicated to sharing insights and demonstrating that Bitcoin is more than just a digital currency. Her mission is to educate and inspire a global audience about Bitcoin's value. And beyond social media, she's a board member of the Swedish Bitcoin Association and manages customer relationships, education and partnerships at Sweden's leading Bitcoin exchange, BTC. X. So uh, welcome, Amy. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for having me. It's so fun because these intros, they always make me smile like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Why? This is what you do. I know. It's crazy. Right? Well, I think it's fun, actually, that um, you're obviously way younger than I am and you're super active on TikTok. I have like a TikTok account uh, where I was like, okay, I'm going to start some Bitcoin content. I never really got started with it. I think I also have the millennial pause, by the way. You know what that is? No. Yeah, like uh, the the Gen Z people, like they just start filming and talking. Uh. And, and millennials, they click record and then they <laughs> wait like and, and to see like, is it really recording? And then they start talking. <laughs> I don't know if you ever saw that. But once someone told me, I could not unsee it anymore. And I was like, damn, this is what I do. Like uh, I'm checking if it really records. So I appreciate your TikTok efforts. And, and we're going to talk about that because I'm interested to hear like, you know, are you reaching people and, and what are they saying? But uh, I first wanted to start, and I mentioned it already, I think you're 22, 3. I turned uh, 23 last week. So. Oh, wow. Congrats. Yeah. So you're part of, of Gen Z. Like, how, how do you experience talking about finance, economics, Bitcoin, etc. cetera, with, with your generation? Um, it's a good question. Like ta talking about uh, finance and Bitcoin is not really that difficult. Uh, I feel like the hard part is getting people to understand. Uh, I would say that like, like the whole generation, we care a lot about finances and economy, but in a way, like, like honestly, in a way that we haven't done before. But I kind of feel like a lot of people focus on the wrong thing. Hmm. So... Like the focus is more on on the individual on the individual part, uh, and it's often like uh, to get rich quick, if you know what mm. I mean. So yeah. every time I mention Bitcoin, that's usually like where the focus ends up. Like uh, how to get rich? Uh, when will I get rich if I buy Bitcoin? How much uh, should I invest? So like talking uh, Bitcoin in in this generation, like. That's not difficult, but the difficult thing is to make people understand that Bitcoin is like so much more than just an, invest an investment that you can get rich from. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny, right? Because Bitcoin is not a get rich quick scheme. It's a do not get poor <laughs> scheme, right? Like, exactly. Yeah. Every time someone is like, okay, but how, how do I get ma money fast? I'm always like, okay, buy, buy your shit coin. Come talk to me later. Yeah, exactly. You got a shitcoin before you before you Bitcoin. But where where do you think people get this get rich quick attitude from? Like, is that is that the culture or? I think it's the, probably the culture. I don't mm. know. But they would realize it's not realistic. I think. Probably. But then when you talk about it, like, what, what do they say when you say like, well, Bitcoin is not a get rich quick uh, <laughs> scheme? Uh, well, a lot of people are like, uh, uh, it's not, not any idea for me like to buy Bitcoin. I'm too late. Uh, I will never make money of this. Um, so that's like the kind of approach that I get yeah. when, when I'm trying to talk about Bitcoin in like an investment part. Yeah. And so then it must also be hard to go beyond that part, right? Like for them to yeah. see everything else about Bitcoin. Yeah, probably. But like, I think the hardest part is to make people understand that uh, Bitcoin is more than an investment. And then they're like, what is it then? And it's so hard for people to, to like grasp that Bitcoin is a solution because they don't have that much knowledge about our current monetary system. Yeah. Yeah. So they don't see the problem. Right. I think, exactly. I think that's, uh, in general, a problem for us, right. People who are very passionate about Bitcoin and we start talking about it, you know, like most people don't really realize that they have a problem. And I think 
you know, you're from Sweden and I'm from the Netherlands. Like we, we live in countries where, yeah, I don't know, like the money just works, right? When you were younger, you got some coins and you went to a store and you bought something. It was like, okay, this yeah, thing works. I, I, I usually say that like in my generation, I represent a generation where like we believe that a blip with our Visa or MasterCard, that solves all of our problems. <laughs> yeah, funny. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. So when you go on TikTok and you share your videos, what type of engagement do you get? Like, are there, I mean, sometimes on YouTube here, like I get people that reply like, hey, you got me into this part of Bitcoin or that, or you got me studying, you know, and I always think that's nice to hear because I don't, I don't think you can orange pill someone else, right? Like they need to get interested and then study. Like, how is that on, on TikTok? It's uh, it's actually so amazing. I had a women and um, and Bitcoin workshop just a week ago, and it was this girl that came up to me and she said that you know that I'm like in Bitcoin now because of you. Yeah. And like I I still can't grasp that. Like just the fact that I know that I like I I orange pill people. I know that uh, because that's the reason why people people follow me on TikTok or Twitter. Yeah. But just when it was in person, like when someone someone come up to you like that, yeah, that that made me so happy. But well, uh, I believe that like the reason that I started with the with with the TikTok is I, I think that I understand like the significance of of Bitcoin and like when you start to grasp that, you kind of feel like compelled to share that knowledge with others. So. Like I have a lot of friends, uh, but every time I try to speak about Bitcoin, like no no one was listening. And who who am I to blame them? Because I walked in their shoes. Mm -hmm. And I think that I realized that in 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 my generation, the problem is the lack of knowledge. Like I mentioned, like you won't see the the solution if you don't understand the problem. But also like the the in, this interesting in in learning. Uh, so yeah, as I just men mentioned, you have to like start at, at the other end. Uh, I might be generalizing now, but I feel like we Bitcoiners were so good, like me included, at throwing information at the, the people that we're talking to, the people that we're trying to orange pill. But like I recently understood that it's it's not in human nature to understand a solution if you don't grasp the problem, and this comes with everything. Yeah. So. I, I took this example. Uh, if if you put a vacuum cleaner in front of a person and they have no idea what a vacuum cl cleaner is, they won't understand how to use it. Because like you yeah. won't understand how to use a vacuum cleaner if you don't understand that the problem is that you don't want a dirty floor. And mm -hmm. you won't understand the problem and no, no, not the problem, the solution of a, va a, a va watering can if you don't understand that the problem is that like your flower is going to die if you don't water it. So you won't fully understand Bitcoin's potential unless you see how monetary are, how broken our current monetary system is. Yeah. So yeah, I guess that like it was the gap in knowledge that made me realize that uh, like this is people that should be aware of this. They should be aware on like how our current monetary system works. So while my friends were like uploading videos uh, on TikTok while they were dancing, like I did that as well, dancing and doing their makeup, I realized that, hey, this is an opportunity to talk about Bitcoin mm -hmm. because how, how do you orange peel your generation? Yeah, you go where they are and they're watching TikTok. So, but like, I feel like the comments are both first they were like pretty negative and it was also like you're a girl what, what can you tell me about bitcoin and uh, i think that motivated me fun to be like okay let me show you what i can teach you about bitcoin hey there i want to ask you for a quick favor i noticed something interesting 75 percent of my viewers aren't subscribed yet subscribing helps me grow this channel ensuring more great content each week so if you're enjoying our conversations on Bitcoin for Millennials, please consider hitting the subscribe button on YouTube or the follow button on your favorite podcasting app. I'm super grateful for everyone who already joined and shared their thoughts. Your feedback really keeps me going. 
And I want to ask you to continue doing that. I try to respond to all the comments and also the emails that I get uh, and DMs on Twitter, etc. So don't stop doing that. I'll keep going. Now let's get back to the conversation. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, I I 100% feel the same as like you're, you feel the urge to to talk with other people about it, right? And, and like you start with your friends and you hope they can see it too. But I think what you said was great. Like you've been in their shoes as well, right? But, and, and we'll talk a bit about like your journey into Bitcoin. But like for me, after 10 years, like I cannot really retrace my own steps, right? And sometimes I hear myself say things where I'm like, Oh wow, this is where I'm at now in my thinking, you know, as in yeah. wow, okay, like I'm 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 again like two steps further or something like that, right? And so it's hard to kind of like pinpoint how how I eventually got here with a certain understanding and like urge to tell other people. But I also learned along the way I have to stop um overloading them with information, right? Like it's it, it should be the other way around. Like you should start asking questions. You know, and you can you can talk about, you know, of course you can share information, but when you ask questions, you know, then you invite people, you show interest and you invite other people to actually yeah. think about, well, yeah, what do I think about this subject, right? I had, uh, we had friends over like two weeks ago and um, I was I was talking to them and ended up on Bitcoin or crypto or whatever. And this guy was like, he was the boyfriend of uh, my girlfriend's best best friend. And I met him for the first time. And so he talked about crypto and stuff. Yeah, he said, yeah, yeah, I was in that, but I sold it all. And now I'm doing, I don't know, S&P 500 ETF or something. And I just started asking questions like, okay, you know, which companies carry the S&P 500? You know, <laughs> what, what is the return of the S&P 500 over the past five years? Like, do you know what, how much Bitcoin is, et cetera? And he he didn't know the answers. So I said, okay, but then you're investing in something that you don't really understand. He's like, well, yeah, well, uh, apparently yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Try and, Bitcoin. You know, no, but then like it's, I think that way, and I'm, it's hard for me because I just love to like preach it or something, you know, and then, but uh, so, but I actually, by asking the questions, it also helps me reframe my own, yeah answers to the questions right and be kind of like uh, like learn how other people react or answer and then like try to shape my like my goal um yeah. with you know what their answers are to me so it's also I, I i try to look at it as like a fun exercise and then at the end he asked me like you know we talked for an hour and he's like oh could you send me like these and these podcast episodes or what's that book you mentioned <laughs> and then i think like wow that's great right i think that's the only goal we can have is that someone is like hmm okay i'm intrigued about this exactly right like i'm intrigued i'm 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 going to go for it and so when when people reply on tiktok right like what are some misconceptions that that you get and like how how do you address them like when when people say you know it's boiling the oceans or whatever um like i, I think the biggest like misunderstanding about bitcoin is probably that you have to be technical to understand bitcoin and like no you don't you do not have to be technical to understand bitcoin look at me like i'm i'm just a normal girl living in sweden and i wasn't technical at all when i started to learn about bitcoin so like i think that's and that's also a very important misunderstanding because that scares people away from bitcoin yeah. Um, so, for example, you don't question how your fo phone works, right? Mm -hmm. You just use it. So, and mo most of our, like, the people around us, they don't question the use of our monetary system, but you still choose to trust it. So when the computer arrived, that was the thing that was super complex. And when the internet arrived, that was super complex. And now we think that's super easy. So... Like when it comes to Bitcoin, I think that we will grow into that whether we like it or not. Um, but also the meaning that, like we talked about, that people think that Bitcoin is just an investment or it's just a digital currency. And Bitcoin is so much more than just a, a di digital currency. It's 
like for me, Bitcoin is a symbol of financial innovation and freedom. And Bitcoin's value isn't in its like physical form, but mm. it, the value lies in the ability to like pioneer new paths and open new doors to a decentralized borderless economy. Um, so yeah, the, the biggest misunderstanding is that Bitcoin is just money. Yeah. Like bit, Bitcoin is for sure money, but it's money that we can use as a v value keeper as well. Yeah. And like, that's the future of how we perceive and how we can like look back at value again. Yeah. Well, it's actual money, like exactly what the, what the goal of money yeah. is, right? But there again, like, uh, well, that's of course why Robert Breedlove has what is the what is money show, <laughs> you know? <I> think. <laughs> and and again, like for us in a Western country, we never question what is money, right? And so even even kind of poking at you know, uh, if someone says, well, Bitcoin is too technical, if uh, someone, if you then ask, well, can you explain to me how the central bank of uh, Sweden works? <laughs> yeah, there's probably also not an answer, right? <laughs> but but just being, um, being curious about that when someone starts talking about that, I think that is already an interesting experience or like the yeah. tension that you create there, right? Because they could be like, uh, you know, what are you talking about? Or they can be very surprised when you tell them how central banking works, right? Or that, you know, the numbers in your banking app are not even really there. Like not, not as you remember from the comic books, you know, yeah. that there's like a safe with golden coins and all these things. Like it's not there, it's fake, right? Um, like that is already, you don't, that, that's even before you would probably talk about Bitcoin, you were already touching upon those things that, they never even questioned in their life, right? So when when you talk about these subjects and you say these things, that's already like a little bomb for people, right? Like yeah. it's it's difficult. It is. Yeah. And so how did you get into Bitcoin? Uh, well, I think that like looking at the, this question, I think that a lot of like people's Bitcoin stories actually begins before they actually know it. If you asked me this question like one and a half year ago, I would probably say that my Bitcoin journey began in 2021, but I'm a why person. Like I find myself in every situation asking why. So <laughs> uh, like that made me realize that, okay, in 2021, I found an interest for Bitcoin, but why did I do that? So now I would actually say that my Bitcoin journey began in 2011. And that can sound uh, pretty weird because I was only 10 years old. Um, but that was the first time in my life where like, I find myself in, I, I find myself facing experiences that were completely new to me. So for the first time in my life, I saw and I experienced poverty, for example. And now I'm not talking about like the kind of poverty where people still have a roof over their heads. I'm talking about like, I saw the kind of poverty where people walk around in the desert asking for even a drop of water. So I saw that, but I also experienced the big con contrasts that exists in Egypt. So like, for example, you know, the big temples and the gold chests and ev everything that comes with the ancient Egypt. So I think like even then, even though I was so small, I began to ask myself why. Like, why did we end up in a society that looks like this? Because the problem for sure isn't the people. They, they look so kind. And it took me years to understand that, no, it's not the people who's broken, it's the system. So the system is broken, and but, but the people are the one who suffers. Like, the mon, bon, the, our monetary system is broken, and our monetary system is the foil to our entire world. And I think that because I experienced this when I was very young that like indeed planted something in me that year later led to my interests in like economics, politics, poverty, culture, which brought me to where to, to like the university. And I started to study international political economy in 2021. And when I started to study that, I was still unaware of uh, Bitcoin's potential impacts in the world, but 
like I think that the academic journey actually like led me to a broader understanding and like eventually to the world uh, of, of Bitcoin and its implications. Um, so I, I guess I just started to learn about everything that you're not taught in school. And I also started to question that, like for example, inflation. Uh, so we we looked at inflation, we're taught as, all, as we're taught in all the universities that so we have this 2% inflation and that's normal. And uh, this is how we keep the economy moving. And uh, I couldn't shake that off. Uh, mm. It was like, especially the inflation part uh, where I was like, but inflation can't be normal, come on. Uh, so like I found myself deeply questioning our, our current monetary system. And I like, I still remember the night where, where I realized that, okay, but maybe Bitcoin is the solution because Bitcoin's actually always been a part of my life because my dad's been like, he's been into Bitcoin for a long time, but it's just been there. I've never been interested. Mm -hmm. And I re really remember when I was sitting at uh, sitting in the kitchen and my dad was making dinner and I was just ranting about our weird monetary system that like we put together. Come on, like we created this. We are the guilty ones. Exactly. Uh, this a, wait, this is a good point. I, uh, when you hear people from like Central Bank of Europe be like, oh yeah, we have to tame the, be the, in, the beast of inflation, blah, blah. And then I think like you did that. Like it's yeah. not, this is your policy. You're like, you made this up. You know, like exactly. and, and that is also part of the entire gaslighting, like, oh, yeah, oh, inflation. Oh, it's the companies and this and that. Like, no, that's, <laughs> like, you know, yeah, sorry. But, yeah. Exactly. So that, like I was just who came up with this? Why are we doing this? And my dad, like casually cooking food, he was like, hmm, maybe you should look into Bitcoin. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he was like, but look into Bitcoin. But I was more like, okay, please explain to me how this made up currency will fix the world. But again, I am a person that asks why, like I'm super curious. I wanna know everything about everything. So after that, uh, like he gave me a quick introduction and, uh, but I really love that he's kinda do your own education, but I'm here to support you if you have questions. Uh, so like after that, I, I guess I like spend the coming weeks just reading everything I could. I watched a lot of, um, I don't know if you know, uh, Johnny Appleberg, he makes mm -hmm. videos of Knut Svanholm's books or something like that on YouTube. I watched a lot of them. Nice. Uh, that's nice, right? Because, and, and also what I like about making a podcast or that you're, you're doing TikTok, like you never know where, what you create, where that ends up. Right. So I think it's really cool that, um, well, did you met him, uh, also like in real life later on now, like, uh, were you able to tell him that he, he taught you those, uh, like Knut, Knut and Yanni. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I write a bachelor thesis, um, about Bitcoin in developing countries. And Knut was one of the persons that I interviewed for that. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And so then you studied, your dad must have been super happy, like super prou proud. He is. <laughs> okay. But then, so you studied and then like, what, what was, so you were like, okay, how can this magic internet thing, uh, you know, be the solution? Like what, what's the core of what made it click for you then? What made it click? Mm-hmm. Maybe it was my, like my bachelor thesis that I wrote that, that made me realize because I kind of believe that that essay was my breakthrough. That was when I really understood that, like I understood Bitcoin before that, but I think that made me realize that, wow, Bitcoin solves so many of today's financial problems. Uh, like, I mean, we can, we can just look at the fact that 1.7 billion people lack access to a bank account, but more than half of these people have access to a mobile phone. Like, why don't the world know this? Like, tell, tell that to people and that should be enough. Mm -hmm. And like, also the fact that being 
excluded in a way from from an eco- economy like this, it affects a person in everything. Like it gives a person a more vulnerable life situation. And like not only do they like experience financial insecurity, they are like they also have like limited economic uh, security and they are poorly prepared for economic chaos such as like hyperinflation and we can like we can even look at like facts if you have a bad economic situation they have proved that that will affect your mental health Mm -hmm. and it's closely associated with like health problems such as depression and anxiety Or, or just like the fact that the world bank they count financial inclus- inclusion as a human right. And that means that we have one, 1.7 billion people that lack access to human rights. And we understand that Bitcoin can solve this. Mm-hmm. And so, so, so just that with the financial inclusion. But then when you also understand that many developing countries, they are so much more sensitive to inflation and hyperinflation. And then you come to the realization that Bitcoin fixes this as well. So it's so, it's so powerful. I I really think that my, like my bachelor thesis was for sure my, my, like my breakthrough Yeah. when I was like, wow. But was that then also the moment for you where you actually, now that you say this, so this is how I think about it, but like that you actually, when you wrote it down, that you understood that you understood it and then you see what it can be. For Does sure. that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, funny. Funny. I think I I had somewhat the same experience, like after all the studying, like the, the different little essays I wrote also for myself, where I, or when I had like a conversation with people there, when it just like flowed out of my mouth, I was like, okay, uh, this is very clear to me. So what is, yeah. what is the implication of this, right? Um, well, what did yeah. you study? Uh, I, I studied something with digital uh, communication and business and stuff. <laughs> no, no, like not during my study, but more like at, at different moments. Yeah, just writing things down or like, uh, I don't know, seeing something in the news and being like, hmm, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Like, yeah, no, I think it should be like this and this and this, right? But but it makes a lot to put like thoughts and, and, and things into a paper. It yes. does. Well, it structures your thoughts, right? I think uh, for me, this is kind of also like a selfish hack doing the podcast is it helps me structure my thoughts, right? Because I hear you speak about your journey and then we share and, you know, like- I'm jealous. No, but I think as being a guest, it's the same. It's it's the same, right? Um, And also, well, you just shared, you know, like your friends are not really into it or like maybe a very like small circle. Like I have the same, I think in general for lots of Bitcoiners, that is the experience, right? Like that your your real life circle is very, um, very small and like online it's, it's hundreds or, or thousands of people, right? But once you, um, once you talk to other Bitcoiners in real life, you know, or like this, you get to kind of like validate your thoughts and also realize that people from different ages and different backgrounds and different experiences and insights, et cetera, like they all ended up with the same conclusion. Yeah. And that for, that for me is like a, a very, uh, how do you say, like, like a, a, a positive confirmation of my own thinking. Right. And I think you're experiencing that as well. Right. If you, if you reach a random person on the internet and you help them get in, you know, get Bitcoin and then get into Bitcoin, right? Like that is just really cool. Like that is a, it is. a testament also to your own work, right? So I think that, is a, yeah, that, you know, that's always, always fun to hear. And so when you wrote the thesis, uh, like what was the reaction? Okay, so first of all, I wanted to write, in Sweden, we write a, a thesis before the bachelor thesis, and that's called a B thesis. Uh, okay. And that's like a smaller essay you do. And even there, I was like, I, I want to write about Bitcoin. And my professor, he said that you can't write about Bitcoin in a B thesis. Like Bitcoin is way too abstract for doing that. So I trusted him. 
I was like, okay, maybe Bitcoin is too abstract to write about in a B thesis. But when he says that you should write about bricks instead and like how bricks works together with the dollar hegemony. Hegemony. That was a hard word for me. That is a difficult word, yeah. (laughs) No, but when he said that, write about bricks instead. So I did in my B thesis. And uh, I can for sure say that BRICS is way more abstract to write about than Bitcoin. Uh, But like I left this little um, note in in the end where I said that maybe we can like, what do you say? Uh, Like try to, um, to put the dollar down in another way than bricks, but I didn't say Bitcoin. It was just a hint. Um, So for, uh, for my bachelor thesis, I like, I was, I already decided that I'm going to write about Bitcoin. And I had another professor for that. And uh, he said, no, he was like, no, uh, we don't have enough data for that. We don't have enough studies where you can like lie your study on. Um, it's going to be so hard for you. You shouldn't do that. Uh, so I had to convince him. So what I did was actually that I wrote, I think it was like two pages or something about like how the situation looks in the world today. And that's when I wrote like, oh, 1.7 billion people like access to a bank account. Look how many that has a phone. Where can you have Bitcoin on your phone? Uh, and I just gave that to him and I said, read this and decide after that. Mm. And he read that. And after that, he was like, okay, it will be tough, but you'll do it. And nice. I think I kind of orange pill him. He- and so at the end, you you have to defend it, I think, right? You have to present it and they ask you yeah. questions. How, how did that go? Actually, it went pretty well. But it, it was more like... He thought that it is like, like not enough research for you to lay your study on, but it was. So like that wasn't a big problem at all. Nice, nice. And so I saw, uh, I think on your Twitter somewhere, you know, and um, you just mentioned it, you know, like if people want to get rich quick, you know, you'll be like, oh, just get into crypto, try that. You know, yeah. you figure out you won't get rich quick, but when you started looking into this, did you just stick with Bitcoin because your dad said that? Or did you also look at like other crypto? Because now, of course, you are Bitcoin only and and, and you reject crypto totally. How, how did that go? Um, I think that like when you come from the economic sphere, I think that it's quite easy to jump over the other cryptocurrencies because mm. everything make, may make sense. I I can put it like this. Bitcoin is the only cryptocurrency that is designed as a solution to today's monetary system. That is very important. And it's only actually also the the only cryptocurrency that is like completely decentralized and lacks a central authority. That's really important. And it is the only cryptocurrency with a built-in mathematical formula that says that it will be a maximum of 21 million Bitcoins. Like in the long run, that will mean that we will have a deflation. That's also really important. And if you grasp that, then you will like, you'll come to realize that all the coins that are created after Bitcoin, they are created out of pure greed. And Knut von Holm, he, I think he usually says that Bitcoin is not an, uh, an invention. It is a discovery. And it, it is really difficult to create a new network where the people in the network already are aware of the discovery. It's really difficult to discover something again. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that there, like, I know that there's a lot of people that justify the existence of other cryptocurrencies and believe that, like, Bitcoin has a lot of gaps where we can fill in. But I would say that it's really important to understand that Bitcoin is a technical infrastructure like internet. And it's 
constantly being developed and adapted. And we can draw a parallel to, to our social infrastructure. If we find something in our social infrastructure that has not yet reached the desired level, or like something that we can develop, we will not create a new infrastructure. We will work with the infrastructure that we already have. We will develop that infrastructure. So that's the reason why I'm going to stick with Bitcoin. Yeah, I love that. I was I was looking up uh, a tweet I had about, uh, because I love the word discovery too. Uh, I think it's something like, as you said, you know, Bitcoin is something that can be only discovered once, right? Like finite yeah. digital scarcity. And crypto is an attempt by startups to have a token fuel a certain ecosystem that they're building, right? It, it's just, it's fine that people are trying to figure out what that could be, but it is a totally different thing. Yeah, like it, it's not what Bitcoin is, and and I think it's correct, right? When you say all the cryptos came after Bitcoin, what I got from I think it was Jeff Booth. He said like, when you look at like the you know the value propositions of all these other cryptos, it's like we are faster, we are a hundred million trillion, I don't know transactions yeah. <laughs> per second, blah blah blah. But they they approach it just from the technological aspect, right? Um, yeah. And then, for example, when you watch um, the talk by Jack Mahler's at Bitcoin Atlantis, I mentioned that a lot on this on the podcast, but it's just really good talk. He actually shares why the amount of transaction throughput for Bitcoin is the best one, because it accounts for, for example, the speed of light. And why do all the other blockchains break is because they go faster, like they go faster than than the speed of the data basically so the clock the, the 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 speed of the blockchain goes too fast and then it breaks no well, maybe that's a bit too technical but i think it's interesting that they focus on that part yeah. right where it's more about the security towards the future and right and so the decentralization and the security is is more important than the speed in bitcoin and when people say, yeah, but it should be faster, et cetera, because Visa is a blah, blah, blah. Then you're comparing like a layer six, seven or eight of a monetary system with something that is layer one. And yeah. if it's layer layer one, the eventual layer one of the current money system is gold. Yeah. Right? And so if we compare it to gold as like the base layer of all the money in the world, then it's... Yeah, it's ridiculously more superior, right? Well, was it was it Jack that made a like a keynote about this? Or mm -hmm. yeah, I, I need to see that. I haven't seen. Yeah, that. you have to watch that. For me, in ten years of Bitcoin, that's the best explainer uh, I've probably seen in like an hour. But you know, um, I think the biggest difference is. Bitcoin is a discovery of finite digital scarcity and crypto, you know, they, these are tokens to fuel an ecosystem, yeah. you know, fine devil in that, but it's just different. It's just a different thing. And, it you know, it's, it's, it's fine. <laughs> and so what, when you, when you talk to people, right. Or, or you see comments, you know, or just how you look at how people are discovering Bitcoin, what do you think is the main thing people need to learn or unlearn before they can understand Bitcoin? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would say that they, they, need to, they need to learn, like as I already said, about the problem. They, they need to understand the problem. And to do that, like I, th I think that most of the times it will come to you. Like I come to, came to the realization that when I talk to people, I'm like, okay, you don't get this now. And that's okay because you will get it someday. You will learn about Bitcoin, whether you like it or not, because Bitcoin is here to stay. But to learn or unlearn, I would say un <laughs> unlearn your mindset, <laughs> change your mindset, be more optimistic. I think that so many people, they're, they're working like this and they like, they will mm -hmm. never grasp it because they already yeah. made up their mind. 
Well, I think that's a team that comes back a lot, right? Like many Bitcoiners believe that Bitcoin turns nihilism into optimism, you know? Yeah. And I think kind of like how I view Gen Z from a, di from a distance, right? Is that um, I kind of see it as like a barbell. Like one side is just really nihilistic. There's nothing in the middle. And then there's like the other side that's super optimistic, right? And they're yeah. using the internet to learn and, you know, everything is free, you know, that they, they are totally using that opportunity to develop themselves. And so I don't see a lot like, like in the and middle. Can we, can we compare those kind of people, uh, persons, like who moved the easiest in today's society? The people that wants to learn about AI and the people that wants to learn about new technology and the people that wants to learn about internet. So do yourself a favor and try to think outside your little box. You'll yeah. thank me later. Yeah, hundred percent agree. But like, is this what you also see? Like, let's focus on, let's say your generation, like, is it kind of like just those two parts, you know, are a lot of people nihilistic, you think? Like, are they not enthusiastic about the future? You know, like they're negative, et cetera, or do you think it's not that bad? Um. I don't know. Well, I, I wouldn't say that it's that bad. I think mo it's mostly in like the unknowledge still. Yeah. It's like pe people will think like think that Bitcoin isn't a solution because they don't know any better. But have yeah. you ever talked to, to a person that choose to be against Bitcoin and that fully understands it? No. No, me neither. No. Yeah. That's also an interesting uh, thing I've noticed. I think a lot of people think the same, right? Like, uh, and it's what Sailor says about there are no informed critiques, but that is kind of it, right? Like change, you said change your mindset. I usually say like, think for yourself, right? It's yeah. when you ask a question to someone and they reply, you know, you're a why person, you could ask them why, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I think, I think that is all, you know, that's always like a good way to kind of get a feeling for how, yeah, how someone's mindset is, right? Or or how they think. Um, but also, you know, I think many people who realize, many people realize that like once they understand Bitcoin, you know, and they see a lot of nonsense about it from these critics, for example, in the media, right? Just nonsense pieces in serious yeah. newspapers or media, for example, right? They start questioning like all these other subjects that are portrayed in the media, right? Like, okay, well, there's this one topic that I know a lot about and people write nonsense about that. Uh, you know, what else is nonsense? Has this also been your experience? I think so. Or I know that it is like that. Uh, I think media is so scary, to be honest. And I talk to many of my friends and my family and they don't understand the problem with this. They think that like Sweden is very uncensored when it comes to how we share information, but it's not. And this applies to so much more than Bitcoin. Like uh, I won't go into politics in this, but the way that we in Sweden appro approach certain things is not at all consistent to to how we see things at, like in the rest of the world. And that makes you suddenly start to question, is this true? Or like, is this not true? I think, and, and like the good thing with that is that today's generation, we go a lot on Twitter, we go a lot on TikTok, we are a lot on Instagram. Uh, so we got the news from other things than watching uh, the TV during night. But like you, you need to be on your tippy toes there as well. Uh, yeah. Like, especially when it, when you hear news from social media, check your resources. But like, honestly, I think that you learn more today. You, you get more correct information if you check your social media than if you go on your eight o'clock uh, TV news. Yeah. Well, it's funny, right? But like what you mentioned about your friends and your family, like they, they don't... They don't see it, right? Maybe, well, if they watch like traditional media, which is funny, by the way, the word traditional media, like there's people online that have more reach than yeah. tra traditional media. But 
I, I think the think for yourself part um, of which, you know, a mindset change has to come first before you can think for yourself, obviously, right? For sure. That is already something where people struggle, right? Like just the entire concept of, okay, I get my information about inflation, you know, let's keep it at, at the, the, the economics part. Like I keep, I keep my, I get my information uh, about inflation from, you know, the TV at, at 8 PM, right? Like what you then do is like, you just accept that you have no clue how it actually works. You give responsibility to other people to tell you what you should believe. Right. And then you just accept that without any uh, questions. Right. Maybe even when it doesn't make a lot of sense to you or you don't even think about it and you're just like, oh, well, OK, you know, that's it. I'll, uh, you know, buy less uh, chicken this month or bread or yeah. whatever. like you, you just position yourself as, I don't know, like like a helpless person. Right. Like, yeah, I can do anything about it. Right. But like these other people that decide for you, are they smarter than you? Do they have more, I don't know, why do they have more power over you to tell you these things and help, you know, make you adjust your behavior in your own life and change your decisions, all these things, right? Just that question, like you don't even have to talk about Bitcoin and how is the solution, like just that, when you talk about that, that's already like a really hard conversation for people because they'll be like, oh, well, we live in Sweden or the Netherlands. Like, what are you complaining about? It's still fine yeah. and uh, no problems and blah, blah, which in part obviously is true, but that should not be a reason for you to not think for yourself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that's so true. And like in in Sweden, I wouldn't say that like we like I question everything now, especially when we're having a conversation about this. Uh, but I think like the biggest problem is how we censor things that happen outside Sweden or like inside Sweden as well. I had um, a chat with uh, with another Bitcoiner and he asked me, uh, he sent me an article and he said, he, he, he kind of said like, how, how is it for you in Sweden? I hope you're taking care of you. And I just opened that and I was like, what, what, what's going on? What is this? And it was an article about some uh, P policemen in in Sweden they went out and and they said that we can no longer protect uh, the women in our country and I am a woman in my country and mm -hmm. that information didn't reach me at all well yeah that's strange it's it's crazy with that being said uh, I think that Sweden is a safe country like I am not bothered at all. So, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. I, I, because I also wanted to ask you a question. I saw in another podcast you drew a comparison between the matrix and the fiat system, <laughs> which I like. I talk about the matrix a lot. I, I see. I love the it matrix also as the matrix. Can you explain why you compare it and how do you see people like? waking up to the fact you know that they could step out of all of this with uh, with bitcoin i would say that the fiat system is uh, the matrix like bitcoin is not the matrix the fiat system is the matrix mm -hmm. but bitcoin yeah. is the thing that can like that opens the door that gives you a way to get out of the matrix and this like drives me back to the knowledge like again as i told you did you ever talk to someone that chose to be against bitcoin at the that truly understands it. No. So as Morpheus say, he, he says in the ma matrix, um, he says something like when you're inside the matrix, you look around and you will see businessmen, teachers, lawyers, you will see people that we're trying to save. But until then, like these people are just a part of the system, which more or less makes them their, our enemy. And most of these people are so invested in the matrix. So they will fight to protect it. And like for me, sure, that sounds like ignorance, but like the ignorance that we hear from, from media, that Bitcoin is speculative and Bitcoin is for criminals and Bitcoin is bad for the environment. But that's because they didn't understand Bitcoin. They're so stuck. They're still stuck in the matrix. 
So of course, like if if media is picturing our like society and our environment and 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 Bitcoin that Bitcoin is bad for this and it's bad for this and Bitcoin is doing that. Yeah, we will start to think the people around us will start to think that that's our reality. So the fiat system is the matrix and Bitcoin is what opens the door. Yeah. So what do you think? You know, it's funny that like while you're talking, I'm thinking about this video of uh, what's his name, Yuval Harari, that went like viral uh, this week. You know, the 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 writer. Did you see him? No, I didn't where see. He, where he said about you know I have a problem with Bitcoin. It's a system of distrust. We should <laughs> trust human organizations and all these things. And, you need to send me this. Yeah, I'll send it to you on Twitter. Um, and it's just like all the Bitcoin people replying, like you, you turn this around. Like it's not distrust, it's honesty, right? Like we cannot trust ourselves and we don't want to be forced to trust other people. Why isn't there a system where we don't have to trust anyone? How can you be against that, right? Yeah. How can you be against a system where nobody has to trust each other, but we can still all benefit from it, right? And you don't have to trust, you can verify it, you can verify how it works and nobody's an owner and it's not a pyramid scheme and blah, 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 like all these things. Like this is the this is the most ultimately transparent thing that has ever existed. Yeah, that and you the can, reason yeah. that people don't get that is because they're stuck in the matrix. They don't know this. They yes. need the knowledge. Correct. It sounds too good to be true because there's nothing else like it, right? I know. I think I think that is the core of it, right? So once you tell this, people be like, "No, it cannot be that," right? But that's the nihilistic ego talking because you are not used to you. You don't. There are no mutually beneficial games in this world. Yeah. It's all zero sum, right? And so when you share, like, okay, there could be this system where. You can trust all the other, you know, you trust other people because, uh, well, you don't have to trust others, right? That's just so foreign to them. And I, I think the matrix in that sense is is a, is a good example because they don't even know that they are in there, right? They don't even know there's know. an alternative system. And when you illustrate that system they're like no that sounds like fancy that cannot be true and then you know it stops there of course because that is where the imagination stops but i like that you said before like you're a curious person i i think i'm also a really curious person but i think that's we are lucky that we got that trait i think right because that is well, I was also always the annoying child in the classroom. <laughs> Why is this? Why is that? Can you explain this to me? Oh, that doesn't really make sense. You know, and all the other kids were always like, "Ugh, there's a Bram again with all these questions. And, <laughs> and, but they thought I was annoying, but I always thought, no, I'm actually interested. Like, yeah. tell me, like, I'm asking questions because I'm listening and I'm actually interested. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? And I always felt that, always felt that way. Um, but it's nice to like hear from other people that they're the same, <laughs> like you have the same issues. I think. <laughs> <laughs> look, yeah. look where they brought us to be 100%. curious. Yeah. And I think, you know, um, and you also shared a bit about this. I saw in another podcast, but like for me, it really frees your mind. Like you can, you know, you can trust yourself. You know, you did the work, you know, you can adopt another system that is carried by well, computing power, but also all these other people that are also adopting this, right? And I think that's a great, great feeling that that clarity, right? And so I wanted yeah. to ask you also about like one of my favorite topics in Bitcoin is about like the spiritual journey that it invites you on. Have you also experienced this? That's this is so interesting. It really is because I've become so much more spiritual but that journey like lays on top of my Bitcoin journey or like they, they, it happened in the same time, like during the same time. And it wasn't until Bitcoin Atlantis where I really understood that, okay, maybe this side of me has everything to do with Bitcoin. Because when, when I was in Madeira, I realized that first of all, it was the first time where I 
was in a place where it was a lot of other Bitcoiners. It was the first time I experienced that. Like being in a room and everybody loves Bitcoin. But what else did we have in common? Like how we picture life. And mm. like we all had the same mindset. And that's like that. That was amazing to see. So I really tried to like see a parallel between them. I think that maybe maybe because Bitcoin is decentralized and it offers a form of financial freedom and independence where we take the power from like our financial system and put it on in our own hands, then that that will for sure do something for you, to you. Hmm. So I guess maybe that's like why, but it's it's super interesting. Yeah. What's like a lesson you've learned? What's like the main thing? Um, of Bitcoin or... Well, this, the, like a spiritual lesson. Uh, about the mindset, I would say. Like, I, I'm so thankful for my mindset and I can find, like, I can find a positive thing in every bad situation. If something bad is happening to me, I'm always like, okay, what are the, like, what is the universe trying to teach me now? Uh, or like I, I said this example, I don't know if it's, it was the podcast that you were listening to, but imagine that you're in the university and you walk, you just bought a coffee and you're walking in the hallway and you spill the coffee all over you, all over your clothes. Like most of the people would be pissed. And I think that's when you should just like kind of take a moment there and be like, what's going on? I'm in a university. I just bought a coffee. I can buy a new coffee. I, I spilled it all over my clothes. I'm wearing clothes. Like I can wash my clothes. So just the mindset and trust your journey. Like everything will sell out for you. I really no. think it will. But if it's if we look more more into Bitcoin, then I would say that Bitcoin taught me that the world is tough, but it's not unfixable. And maybe also it's okay to not agree on on everything. That everything has takes time, and everything has their own time, or like it will fit in in your time frame. So the person that you're talking to, like they she or he doesn't need to understand Bitcoin today because eventually they will another day because Bitcoin fixes everything. Yeah, I think the 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 fact that, you know, the, when you do the work to understand that what this is and what it could bring, right? And then that there's this whole other system of not only money, but also values and spirit in a sense positivity in a sense also yeah. right that once you get there before you get there you you're everyone fights like this personal fight of what how was i raised what was i taught what do i believe what are actually my values what is stuff i have no fucking clue about right that i need to learn like how did i outsource my responsibility over my life like those are like like those are very hard things to realize and yeah realize comprehend but then also kind of like change and actually integrate right so i think it really humbles you this journey and therefore it creates a lot of um like gratefulness right like that that you're grateful for the fact that you were able to do that or you had the time you know, in, in, in a small part, but then if you extrapolate that and make it bigger, you know, then, you know, I think the coffee example is funny, but it's like, yeah, like, what am I complaining about? Yeah. Like, like and, I have and, and all I, these things already and yeah, I didn't and do that, anything for it either. Right? Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. And another example is like, I think like the way you look at happiness, if, if you wake up every day and you say that I'm happy, I choose to be happy, then you will be. Like, even if the money in your savings account are, are tied, I have this example from when my parents, they were in uh, uh, Morocco, Morocco, and uh, 
uh, they they had a guide and she was in my age and it was so clear that she didn't have that much money so my father actually asked her what do you do like like to do on your on your free time and she answered that I love to go in the garden and just read a book because that's when I feel the most happiest and I feel so free. And I would say that that is a girl with a healthy mindset. And this is the things that you should be taught in school because if I asked like some past classmate that I would have, like that I had, she or he would probably answer that, oh, summer vacation, but my family is not going to Spain. So that sucks. I need to spend the whole summer in my country house. And that is a so unhealthy mindset. Like, come on. Yeah. Well, that's the gratefulness I, I talk about, right? And yeah. I think that's also the problem, what you mentioned in the beginning, like the whole get rich quick, et cetera, right? Like, yeah. I don't know what the quote is, right? But uh, I don't know. Something like quickly gained money is also quickly lost, right? Like, because you didn't work for it. Like, you don't, yeah. you don't even understand why you got that money. You know, and I think that is really important that, you know, if Bitcoin goes to where we think it's going to go, we're going to get rewarded for the work we did. But I don't think there's going to be a lot of Bitcoiners that would like, I don't know, like get into, you know, blow it all and get like hooked on coke and other stuff and whatever and then they have to go to rehab. Like, you know, I, I don't think that's going to happen, happen, like, right, not not like. Well, the crypto examples we we seen, I think, <laughs> online, right? But but I think that is it. Like the the entire like um, uh, time preference you have, you know, the humility, the patience, like all these things. Like you actually have to work for this, right? I, mm-hmm. Yesterday I saw a tweet by someone that was really great. Like having a hundred Bitcoin in two thousand ten was not special, right? Having ten Bitcoin in twenty fifteen. Um, was not special, or sorry, having a having a hundred was special. Having ten was special, right? Yeah. Now having one is special. It's special. Right? Having point one in a few years is is special, and so yeah. nobody n- nobody from the early days, maybe a handful of people actually have like still all, all that Bitcoin, right? Because it's really hard, <laughs> like it's really hard <laughs> to keep it, and that is the lesson that that you need to learn is that you become yeah more aware of your time and how you spend it and and you know how you spend the wealth that you have etc and so i think that's kind of like the biggest lesson also that that you learn once you adopt bitcoin is like lower your time preference lower 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 (laughs) right yeah yeah and so uh how has bitcoin changed your worldview as a young person, like you're, you're discovering Um, the world, you know, in a way bigger way, probably than me, you know, at your age, like how, how did it change already? Oh, a lot. Like, I don't even know how, how to, like, I, I don't know, maybe like, as you said, to be like grateful for what you have and to gain hope. Like, I think that many in my generation, we see the future as quite hopeless, but this is exactly where like Bitcoin fits so good in the picture because Bitcoin really creates hope. And like when you least expect it, you will begin to understand that, aha, Bitcoin can actually give that little girl in in Africa a chance for a real life where, where, where she can handle her own money, but it can also may, make my my grandchildren buy an apartment in Stockholm in, in the city instead of like losing all of their money to inflation. And Bitcoin also means that, that like the war that just happened between those two countries, it wouldn't break out if we had Bitcoin as a, as a currency because they need to print money to to be able to afford that war. So I I guess I guess that hmm. just I don't know see see the world in 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 other eyes and in a bigger picture. Yeah. 
I like that you said hope. I think, again, this is something like, uh, that's then like a big word, right? Like, why do you need hope? You're li you live in Sweden, right? Like, yeah. why, do you, why do you need hope? But I don't know. I don't like, I don't like it when people would talk like that. But, I th you know, more, more as an example. But I, I think what it gives you is that whatever you spend your time and energy on, you know, to create value and then get value in return. Bitcoin is the only thing to ever guard that reward into the future. Yeah. To make it not devalue into the future so that you can spend it on whatever you want in the future, right? Exactly. Building a family or a house or, you know, whatever, whatever you want. And I think that when you say hope, that is what I kind of like think about that you you can create the time and thus the space to figure out what am I here to do? What am I here to add to the world, right? Yeah. Whatever it is you, you want to do instead of kind of like being forced into a job month to month, you're getting paid. Nine to five. You have no clue what you're doing, yeah. why you're doing it. You know, I think that is the hope. Or, well, that's what I think of when when you say hope, but yeah. Yeah, interesting. Again, like such a big word. Like Jeff Booth talked to me about uh, inflation and then he said like, yeah, inflation is theft. And then I think like, yeah, I agree. But if you use those words, you know, for a lot of people, it's then already such a difficult conversation, right? Yeah. And so I think it's nice to reflect on that to also figure out like how can we, you know, tune our story <laughs> a bit better <laughs> also to reach people. So I want to ask you two last, uh, last questions. What advice would you give someone from your generation, Gen Z or a millennial, when they're just starting out to explore Bitcoin, what would be the number one thing? Um, I would say, like, ask yourself why. Why do you want to learn? Like, where do you see the important thing in this? And why is this important to you? Find the value in why Bitcoin is needed, but find it yourself. And also like understand that you don't need to know everything. You don't understand what's happening when you make a phone call to the other side of the world, but it works, right? So, and you use your phone like every day. Uh, so just trust the technology because the important thing isn't how it works. It is that it works. Love that. And contrasting to the phone you use every day you can actually if you would want to you can verify how bitcoin works right exactly maybe that's also one of the points yeah don't trust already. verify exactly all right last question and i ask everyone the same question what is a core belief that you will never let go um back to the mindset again again maybe that you uh, you will attract the same energy that you give away. Like, why do you think that Bitcoiners are like the happiest people on the planet? I, I would say that probably because we all look at the future with hope and because we all like we send out and we collect positive energy. If we're all like, if our vi vibrations are here, then we will meet others that are here. So like, and, and this, like this mindset, it needs to start within yourself you are your thoughts and you are your feelings and yes you can control them because you are them like you are hope and i like i strongly believe in in energies and in and in mindset so be optimistic think big and trust that like your way your road that will roll out in front of you because when when you have that mindset then then like your dream will eventually become your reality. Love that. That's a great, great ending. Um, thank you so much for this conversation. Thank you. I, uh, I will make sure to link to your Twitter and TikTok so people can follow you. And uh, yeah, thanks again. It's thank nice meeting. you so much for having me. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, it would be amazing if you could rate, review and subscribe on the podcast platform of your choice. It will help us educate more millennials on the importance of Bitcoin. You can follow and connect with me on Twitter. I'm Bramke, that's at B-R-A-M-K. And if you are or know someone who has an interesting perspective on Bitcoin that's worth sharing, hit me up. I read and reply to every single message. 
I appreciate your support and hope you'll be here for the next episode. Thanks for listening. Bye.